I'm straight, but I, I love gay people. It's the same story as like, I'm not racist. I have, you know, you know, mm -hmm. POC friends like, okay. Hi, I'm Drama and I'm gay. Hi, I'm Elena and I'm a lesbian. And we are reacting to how Filipinos feel about LGBTQ plus folk. The Philippines actually has a deep LGBTQ history. The top yes. six people in Mindanao believe in people who exist in between male and female genders. Trans women not only existed, but held high positions of spiritual power. Because this was threatening to the Spaniards' machismo beliefs, bakla arose as a term that claimed switching between genders was temporary and not normal. The word bakla is such a... It's such it's, a, bad it's word. a bad word. It's a bad word. <laughs> it's, yeah. And... It's not, it shouldn't be, uh -huh. you know, especially after hearing about this. Yes, and like, honestly, I hate children. <laughs> oh my God, I, really, I sound so evil. Because like, growing up in the Philippines, every time, like, I would just be this like flamboyant guy. Mm -hmm. And every time I would just like interact with young kids in the Philippines, they would just be like, ah, oh, bakla, bakla, mm -hmm. bakla. They did not get to know me like beyond that. And yeah. that is the story of why. I think all children are horrible. <laughs> so you're generalizing, <laughs> which you shouldn't do. But. Which I shouldn't do, but yeah, it's horrible that these kids grow up and one of the first few things that they learn is to like make fun of yeah, queer right. people. Had I had been presented with this information if I was in like high school, or maybe even elementary school, yeah. who knows? Like, life would have been so much easier. Like, right. to know that these people held leadership positions yeah. in pre-colonial right. Philippines, like, right. that blows my mind. With our complicated LGBTQ history being erased, Congress still hasn't passed the SOGI bill, which grants LGBTQ protections against discrimination. And this lack of acceptance is felt by LGBTQ Filipinos all over the diaspora, from the US to Canada to the Middle East. Now, I wonder why in the Philippines, politics is just like so homophobic yes. and all of that. I wonder why. Maybe it's because of the strong influence of the church on the country. Yeah. I don't want to step on anyone's toes or anything. <laughs> but oh my God, like just this strong Catholic influence in politics mm -hmm. is like not helping our country progress in the speed that I want it to be. Right. For this last election, I was like reading up on the Soji bill and re reading up on all the different Congress because it was like a long list of like 165 people and like no one's gonna look that up, but mm -hmm. I did. I spent so much time Which looking you it up. Should. I made a whole like <laughs> PowerPoint thing of it and I like put it on social media in case like people wanted to I love use that. it. Like I like to make voter guides because there's people who just don't care right. to like spend time and yes. I will care to spend time. So none of them none of them won. It's horrible. I remember, oh my God, not to call you out mom, <laughs> but I mean, mom's train of thought was basically, oh, I'm voting for this person because I think this person is going to win. Like, mm. that's not really like the best way to approach how you go about voting. This is like not American Idol. I was just going <laughs> to say that. Oh my God. Like for some reason, <laughs> like they treat the elections like yeah. some American Idol popularity contest. And look what happens. Right. And Cataluna Enriquez, who will be the first transgender Miss USA contestant, adding to an already impressive resume as a designer, businesswoman, healthcare worker, and model. Work. So to wow. all the LGBTQ folks who are forging their own path and navigating how to be LGBTQ while being an Ate, Tito, or Lola, history shows oh, that LGBTQ that. folks are not a trend. They've existed before the Philippines was a country and will continue to exist long after. And that's why, like, children who <laughs> see a bakla on the street or, like, in the mall, that that's the person they'll make fun of because they've never seen that and elsewhere. And so for lesbians, I grew up thinking tomboy was a Filipino word. Yes, me too. I thought, like, it literally meant lesbian. So I would me watch, too. like, American shows and then, like, a girl would be like, I'm such a tomboy. And right. I was like, so that means you're, like, a lesbian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Non-binary and gender fluidity, like that needs to get brought onto the table like yesterday. Oh, because oh my god. with the Philippines and the you know the history, there's no gender uh -huh. in our language. So why is that not even 
understood as much as it should be. And now we're going to be reading the comments from this video. My mom likes Vice Ganda, yet is homophobic. My grandma saying she supports the LGBTQ plus community, yet still talks shit about trans people. One of the reasons why I can't come out to them. That's a reality for a lot of people. And it's yeah. just like so horrible that like you cheer on these people on the TV. Yeah. And yet you can't even be nice to the very queer people that like are around you. Yeah. Hypocritical. It is. The idea that like, no, I just, I do support the community, but I just, like, I know how hard it is for queers. So that's why I'm just so scared for you. It is so stupid because that is not your experience. You don't understand and you can't even begin to understand and you can't be afraid for us. Mm. Just support me. Exactly. Oh my God. Some people really feel like they have an ownership over other people. Yeah. That was what I grew up with. Like trans was never used. Mm -hmm. It was a lady boy. It's confusing. Like you're calling a person both when they are trans because they are transitioning mm -hmm. and i don't want to speak for them but i it might be a little harder because of that the idea that they are um pop box like that they're bad because they are deceiving and they're not telling the truth of who exactly. they really are and i'm like no they are a woman like what why why do you want to make them bad just right? because they feel like they are a woman all the conversations always surrounded what is happening down right. there under the belt or like maybe the work that they, they do involves genitals or like anything right, and it's right. just like seriously yeah. like that's what you care about right. there's like so many facets to someone's identity and if the time isn't right yet then the time isn't right yet but you know you'll know and like when you really, really feel like it's time for you to come out. And you know what, what your mom and your grandma says. Yeah. There's not a lot of moving forward if we fellow LGBTQIA plus people discriminate one another. We can't make a united front because even within the community, we bicker. I actually agree with this. Growing up in my all boys Catholic high school in the Philippines, how I wish all my queer, classmates were friends and you know I want to be compassionate of them also because you know I don't know what's going on in their yeah. households and hurt people hurt people but oh my god if we only had like peaceful tables in the cafeteria we, we could all just like bond with each other and like share with each other what's happening in our own homes and just like not feel so alone yeah that would have helped me so much in high school but it was just like Mean Girls. Yeah, wow. And again, like, also for media to represent queer people yeah. as friends. Right, right. Not just as people who are, like, snarky and mean right. to each other. But, like, first of all, to have more than one queer character in your film. Yeah, not just the gay best friends. <laughs> right? Yeah. And to have those more than one characters actually get along with each other. Yeah. With queer media, it is picking up very slowly. And so seeing, like queer eye for the straight guy thing but filipino or friends but filipino but gay <laughs> oh my god that yes. would have been great <laughs> just hang out at the mall or like some yeah. like jollibee or something yeah. <laughs> queer friends hanging exactly. out and talking we need to see that my mother called me evil for coming out as bi and said i could have one or the other but not both which is which i told her was a lie because of how they treated my sister when she came out as a lesbian but she loves talking about her gay friends she had in college and her shows. Oh, I hate when people are being forced to like pick a side. Yeah. There are no, no sides. Right. <laughs> like it's a spectrum, you know? It's like a whole like galaxy. That's exactly my experience with my mom. As much as like my mom is so accepting of me, when I first came out at least, I wanted her to be more accepting. Mm -hmm. You know, she would always be like, but I have gay friends, so it's okay. Like, I, I accept you. There wasn't more to that. Like, I, I needed more. And now I do have that, which is great. So, mom. <laughs> but <laughs> just because you're saying, oh, I have gay friends. Oh, I went to gay bars. I did this, this, this. I'm straight, but I, I love gay people. It's, you know, it's the same story as like, you know, I'm not racist. I have, you know, you know mm -hmm. POC friends, like, Okay. And I just want to like 
establish this and put it out there. If you are a straight person on Pride Month, posting on Instagram about, look at my one gay friend. <laughs> like, we are looking at that post and cringing. Yeah. So rethink next time you post something like that. This video deserves more recognition in the Philippines and everywhere in the world. Yes. Mm-hmm. People everywhere should know that the LGBTQIA plus community in the Philippines are met with gaslighting, tolerance, discrimination, passive aggression, and most of all, hate, all caps, in forms of persecution, sexual harassment, murder, and rape. And the main perpetrators of these damages are the Christian slash Catholic churches and the Philippine government itself. It's 2022, and the LGBTQIA plus community in the Philippines is yet to see any form of protection from discrimination and religion-based hate. Yes, that is like the whole thesis statement of why we are doing this, of why this video exists. I see people who I grew up with who are still in the Philippines, still in that stage in their life where they're struggling and getting to know their queer identity and have not moved past that I really, really, really want them to grow past that because like there's so much more to life than just suppressing your queerness. Well, it's like mental health, like dealing with mental health is not like ever, never been a thing in the Philippines. You know, no one goes to therapy. Mm -hmm. And And people laugh at you when you talk about like depression and things like that. Like, oh, you're just like overacting. Yeah, but it should be like that's it, it. It really should be because Man, there are some people who need help. <laughs> yeah. Long way to go. Yeah, very For long. our country. So many things that need to be changed. So many big, you know, steps that are also happening, which yeah. we, we should celebrate, but a long way to go. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can follow me on all social media platforms at Drama Del Rosario. And you can watch my short personal documentary film, In This Family, on all PBS platforms. And you can follow me at Elena Uze on Instagram, Twitter. You can watch my short film on Netflix called Heartshot.